Hello and welcome everyone a new episode of Money Means Business. We hope that all our viewers enjoyed a wonderful Eid and we hope that the coming days are going to bring prosperity, welfare and peace to the whole world. Well, uh, today we are going to um, give the lion's share of our episode to tourism. Well, uh, when it comes to tourism, Egypt is all the time on top, but unfortunately there are many um, unfortunate events taking place in the Middle East. Um, on the other hand, we are exerting the utmost efforts to boost this very vital uh, segment, tourism, and there is still a lot to do. Our homework is very heavy. We are going to tackle all the efforts exerted, all the goals which are realized, all our dreams, because the sky is our limit. Right after the short break, we are going to turn back. Stay tuned.
Welcome back. Let me first welcome my dear guest, Dr. Amira Ashraf, lecturer in uh, tourism and hotel management. Thank you very much for being with us, Dr. Amira. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for this lovely introduction. Um, Dr. Amira, um, despite the fact that the Middle East, unfortunately, is suffering tensions, conflicts, wars, stuff like that, but Egypt succeeded in receiving more than 14 million guests. I'm calling them guests, not only tourists, in 2023. But still, we do have a lot to do to attract more. Of course, we hope that we are going to enjoy peace and prosperity in the whole world and particularly in the Middle East. But what's our homework? I mean, we, we should do a lot. Is it to continue with launching more uh, marketing campaigns? Is it to participate in international tours and exhibitions? Is it to uh, launch more mega uh, projects to uh, open or to inaugurate or to renovate new museums? Of course, they are all important, but starting with what? Uh, starting with uh, working on uh, the touristic uh, instructions uh, like uh, museums uh, to uh, uh, to uh, facilities uh, facilities in uh, uh, touristic um, sites um, I mean uh, museums I mean any touristic site I mean uh, any um, temples uh, any um, uh, mosques uh, church uh, even medical uh, sites uh, and we're working on that uh, by the way um, currently and uh, uh, for that uh, the marketing the marketing uh, comes in the uh, next uh, step or the second step um, after finishing the, uh, the site itself and its facilities we start to uh, market to it and actually we're working on that uh, right now and not starting from this year only but uh, from about a hundred years. And uh, mm -hmm. since you mentioned museums, mm -hmm. uh, to what extent do you think that uh, the uh, full inauguration, because already we witnessed the soft inauguration mm -hmm. of uh, the Grand Egyptian Museum, how do you see uh, the, um, the official opening of the Grand Egyptian Museum or the gym is going to be a turning point when it comes to tourism um, of, um, of culture, if I may call it mm -hmm. this way? Actually, the official opening ceremony is not um, uh, done or not um, prepared yet, but uh, um, for about 70% of the whole museum uh, is finished, so um, the rest of the 100%, uh, um, we're working on that right now. Uh, some, um, cons um, uh, some conservation um, are being done on uh, some pieces uh, will be uh, in uh, exhibition. Um, and uh, then uh, the celebration, but there is no accurate time for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. because we want everything to be done 100%. Mm -hmm. it, it should be perfect, actually. Yeah. But also, rather than the uh, Grand Egyptian Museum, the state is keen to have museums scattered all over Egypt. I mean, to have um, in Upper Egypt, for example, Suhag Museum, Mini Museum, to have the Museum of Royal Cars in Sharm el Sheikh, mm -hmm. to have a, a museum in Hergada, in Kafr el Sheikh. And to have all these museums, I think this is to change our tour map regarding this vital sector yes. if you agree with me on that yes true actually we're trying to extend uh, that and uh, for about dr. Khalila Nini, the ex-minister of antiquities actually is working um, on uh, about 48 uh, museums uh, mm -hmm. uh, he opened and restored uh, about 48 museums so it's a huge number sure and uh, with a huge budget as well mm -hmm. uh, so uh, one of them is uh, Suhag Museum mm -hmm. uh, it was not opening um, from 80s mm -hmm. and uh, it was opened uh, on um, or under control of uh, Dr. Khalil Lanini mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it's a great uh, museum by the way mm -hmm. in um, in Sharqiyah as well in here in Egypt, uh, the gem in and Cairo, uh, yeah, yeah, and Cairo uh, Museum and uh, the NEMEC as well, mm -hmm. National uh, uh, um, National uh, Museum, mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's considered to be an achievement. Uh, so, sure. um, so we're trying to extend the whole um, uh, uh, kinds or the whole types of the uh, tourism mm -hmm. and uh, to to attract uh, the whole uh, age. Uh, mm -hmm. of uh, tourism and uh, not uh, sorry uh, tourists uh, not only kids not only adults we are going to go to kids because uh, before being with uh, <laughs> before being um, here to uh, introduce our um, uh, to to present our uh, episode 
Um, I talked with you about um, something which for me was a very new chapter. <laughs> and when it comes to kids tourism, uh -huh. is there kids tourism? Yes. The answer is yes. It Tell is. me about this story because this was very interesting. Uh, yes, true. Actually, um, uh, for example, my, um, my thesis, my master thesis was uh, um, how to revive um, tourism or how to revive history um, uh, from or uh, through uh, the animated uh, movies for kids uh, mm -hmm. or cartoons uh, or um, uh, through art and I'm, I was starting and I'm still starting uh, the kids uh, so if you have a kid above um, uh, a certain mentality so uh, he will um, grow up with um, an identity and um, a valuable thing I have to keep mm -hmm. uh, as a kid I mean uh, so um, I was working on uh, cartoons in or animated movies uh, for kids uh, to attract them. Uh, it's a type of um, a historiography mm -hmm. or how to present a history or how to explain history, but not in a boring um, manner. Uh, yeah, uh, this is for Egyptian kids. Yes, uh, no, and, uh, for and then no for, for Egyptian, Egyptian first, kids, and yeah. then uh, to be translated into different languages, yes. so it can be a source of attraction for this category for kids. Yeah. Yes. Um, where we took this idea from? I mean, um, of course, um, of course, I think, mm -hmm. uh, or I think that there are countries who started this before us. Mm -hmm. um, who are the heavyweight names in this regard? Actually, to be honest with you, I was an, um, an English teacher for mm -hmm. kids uh, before being a doctor. So uh, I uh, watched them more than once. Um, uh, they're um, hyperactive and have uh, a large energy. Uh, so uh, once uh, they have a cartoon, uh, they keep calm yeah. and everything is okay and everything is uh, and, and no noise at all. Mm -hmm. So uh, it attracts them. So I think about that, why not, why, um, why we don't have this type of learning or teaching, why we don't um, uh, uh, teach uh, through the, the animated movies or visual learning. Uh, then you started mm -hmm. to take that from teaching to tourism. Uh, yes. So, uh, or uh, as a kind of marketing. Uh, yes, uh, sure. Great. This is, this is very innovative, this thinking out of the box. And I now imagine that inside um, hotels, for example, you mm -hmm. would find such uh, animations or a series, a cartoon, stuff like that. It's going to be eye-catching for all the movies. as well. Yeah. Handmade activities um, uh, where visual learning mm -hmm. uh, will uh, take the memory of the kids. Mm -hmm. um, after, uh, after 30 years or after 50 years, uh, uh, the kids will uh, still, uh, still remember uh, what he did or what he learned through uh, the uh, cartoon he watched or, um, or an activity he, d he did or she did. You know did. what I, what I uh -huh. think, what uh, I'm thinking in right now mm -hmm. is to have those um, animations regarding the Egyptian culture, the, the, the Egyptian mm -hmm. monuments, story yes. of temples, stuff like that on social media because our kids are really that great when it comes to social media even yes. better than us yes. if they share all uh, these uh, series or there there is a special site for that i think this is going to have a big share yes sure actually the social media has a, um, a great role um, and um, uh, every kid uh, has its um, uh, like water every time mm -hmm. so uh, every day so um, it will be um, shared or it will be spread um, more than uh, for about uh, 30 years ago. Mm. Uh, so the social media, sure, um, of course, it has a very um, a, a great role in that. Amen. Uh, let's move to another side of the coin, um, which is the participation of uh, um, Egypt delegations into different um, uh, tours, conferences and exhibitions. And only a um, few weeks ago, I think it was in March, Egypt participated in uh, very huge um, incidents or events which took place in Vienna, mm -hmm. in Austria, and in Moscow, in Russia. How do you see the importance of participating in such events? Uh, actually, so important as uh, we're, uh, we're trying to uh, um, strengthen our um, 
uh, our relations with um, uh, Moscow and uh, Vienna as well. Uh, so uh, it's so important for that. Um, uh, the conferences um, in general uh, has its role in uh, how to treat or how to uh, exchange, uh, for example, uh, students, um, for example, uh, uh, economic uh, trades and everything. So we're exchanging um, everything and is considered to be um, a tourist. Uh, so, um, uh, and so it was also a chance that. to sign mm -hmm. deals and stuff like that because as far as I yeah. remember, more than 80 companies and 80 delegations coming from all over the world were there in each of those exhibitions just to propagate for their countries and for themselves and to sign deals and stuff like that. How do you see this as another opportunity for us? Uh, yes, um, uh, as I told you, the conferences exchanged uh, our relations, our um, uh, uh, citizens and their citizens as well. Uh, so it's considered to be uh, uh, tourism on uh, two countries, mm -hmm. on both countries, here and the other country, for example, Moscow. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, um, for that, uh, for this participation, Egypt uh, was, uh, for example, in 2023, was uh, uh, ranked as the ninth country all over the world in uh, tourism. Uh, but for now, 2024, it's the sixth, and it's considered to be uh, great for that. Uh, we ranked um, as the sixth world um, uh, country uh, in uh, tourism. And uh, thanks given to uh, uh, those conferences and uh, Martin as well, as we mentioned before. Mm -hmm. And uh, since you mentioned that, uh, Forbes uh, decided or released a report saying that uh, the best three destinations for tourists in 2024, Egypt, Albania and Morocco. Mm -hmm. How do you see this and taking into consideration that it's not only about cultural tourism, it's about all types of tourism in Egypt? For me, I see that it's a great marketing from Moscow to us and it's our honor to be ranked uh, by the by one of the th uh, three best countries all over the world. So uh, it's our honor. Uh, and uh, it, so that's why we uh, succeeded to uh, market to our tourism uh, through the conferences and um, advertisements all over the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this means that we are secure, uh, we are safe, mm -hmm. and um, uh, we are uh, yeah. welcoming tours from all over the world. But to open new um, new markets, if I may call it this way. Mm -hmm. um, for example, the Chinese market, because of the huge numbers of people who can come from China to visit us, uh, going to Eastern Europe, to Latin America. How do you see the importance of invading those new markets? Uh, actually, to be honest with you, it's not that much from Asia um, as a whole. Uh, this is just 911, um, uh, sorry, uh, yes, 911,000 uh, um, come here uh, to Egypt every year from Asia. But the, um, this is the point. Why yes. not to double or triple this number? What are the most important things which we should do to double or triple this number? Uh, to be honest with you, as bird language is uh, so rare, mm. it is considered to be unique. Um, the hardest language uh, all over the world is the Chinese language. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, we have here uh, 8 million, uh, 4,000 um, uh, tourists uh, or tourists or guests from uh, Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, Europe and uh, US uh, from Middle East, we have uh, 2 million, 4,000 um, guests uh, every year. But for uh, Asia, uh, it's considered to be Nine thousand, uh, sorry, uh, nine hundred eleven thousand only, mm -hmm. um, and th that's why we're not treating that much for um, with them. We're just treating uh, to um, uh, to expand our market, uh, but not in a vast way. Uh, as for their language, is so hard. It's considered to be the hardest. Let's one. work on that because we want yes. to double, triple this number, or maybe more than <laughs> okay, that, because we deserve to attract more visitors from 
um, all these parts of the world. Mm -hmm. But what about uh, the Arab um, tourists? Because we are about summer and this is their season. We can attract more than last year. Last year we had Al Alamein festival, for example, in the new Alamein city. What to do to double or triple the number who visited us last year? This is going to be my question right after the short break. Welcome back. Um, Dr. Amira, uh, as I, um, I was dreaming before uh, the break that inshallah this summer is going to witness more and more visitors coming from at least all the Arab region to enjoy their summer here in Egypt. Not to have our high season only in the winter but also in the summer. What to do to attract more? Uh, festivals like the Guna Festival, uh, like the uh, Alamin Festival as you mentioned before and uh, um, we have uh, so many uh, districts to be visited or sites to be visited uh, like um, uh, north Medica coast uh -huh, yes north coast and alexandria uh, hergeta and um, any any um, sea uh, uh, we have here uh, they all can our visit, beaches but yeah, yeah <laughs> our, our beaches yes and uh, also the medical uh, tourism uh, is playing uh, very very big role in uh, uh, tourism in Egypt uh, and especially in summer mm -hmm. uh, we have here Siwa Oasis uh, we have uh, Sinai um, Sinai is including Dahab um, Nueva uh, Sharm, uh, Sharm and Sheikh uh, and Hergeda as well uh, is considered to be um, um, not uh, medical but entertaining tourism all i yeah. think yeah and um uh, only also a few weeks ago an important conference and uh, exhibition was held and we listened to speeches by uh, prime minister dr mustafa medbouli and uh, dr muhammad awatagidin presidential advisor for health affairs and they w they said that egypt is going to turn into a medical tourism hub in addition to mm -hmm. other types of tourism this is to change our tourism map uh, yes, sure. Um, uh, this is the extension that I told you before about. Um, we're trying to um, take some lands to um, not just to be uh, Siwa or Sinai, uh, to be medical, uh, but we have here in Cairo, uh, we have uh, so many sites here in Cairo to be considered or to be included uh, in the medical tourism. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're still working on that. Um, so I can I cannot mention uh, which uh, district exactly, but um, it's still. But under at least uh, Madbouli uh, said that Asaf is going to be one of the uh, medical one of tours. Them, yeah, yeah, yeah in Asaf and Cairo is one of yeah. them, but uh, we're still working on the other. Yes, and um, it's going to take some time, but we already yes. started our plan or yes. our strategic plan to be accurate. Um, also, when it comes to mega projects, because. Of course, the gym or the uh, Grand Egyptian Museum is a mega project, but also um, 
also a few um, weeks ago, Prime Minister Dr. Mustafa Madbouli had an inspection tour in St. Catherine and he inspected the Grand Transfiguration uh, project or at Tagalli al-Azam as it's going to be another leap and another gift from Egypt to humanity. Yes, sure. How do you see this also as one of the greatest attractions? Yes, sure. Actually, it will be an inbound and outbound uh, tourism. Uh, not just here in Egypt, uh, um, and not just uh, the Christians, uh, but all, all of us as Egyptians. Uh, so um, it's considered to be a religious um, Religious event. tourism. Yeah, a religious tourism or event. And uh, it's not um, related only to Christians, uh, but uh, to all of us as Egyptians. So uh, it will um, attract... Uh, so many um, uh, number uh, or amount of um, all believers uh, from all over the world. Yeah. I, I think they uh, they can come yes. and they can enjoy uh, every single detail in this project. Yes. Saint Catherine had the the second biggest library after Vatican. Yes, I think um, when we were not that great when it comes to marketing for the place or it needed more propaganda unfortunately we um, uh, this very um, dear place mm -hmm. it was a little bit neglected before if you mm -hmm. agree with me on that too uh, yes i totally agree with you uh, but uh, we're still working on how to market to that uh, to that and how to uh, put facilities for that i mean to um uh, the road uh, to uh, to be easier uh, to make it easier for all the categories of visitors and uh, the inbound and outbound uh, tourism uh, will be um, uh, enlarged or strengthened in this uh, place as uh, um, as I mentioned before it's a religious uh, place and historical as well so uh, it considered to be a great event or a great place like uh, Abu Simbel um, and the coronation and the birth um, uh, dates of uh, Ramses II. So it will be uh, considered to, uh, the, you know, to be in the second rank after Abu Simbel. Uh, this is my opinion. <laughs> inshallah. So inshallah. Uh, yes, so um, we yeah. already started, um, of course, developing the infrastructure and um, building hot hotels, uh, motels, even and uh, youth centers. Mm -hmm. Because, as you've kindly mentioned, yes. um, Dr. Amira, we want all age categories to come and to enjoy mm -hmm. their time here. And w since um, it's part of um, uh, religious tourism, the journey of the Holy Family uh, is another uh, big side of the coin. How do you see um, this as another source of attraction? Because the journey of the Holy Family throughout Egypt, I think it can play a pivotal role in religious tourism in general. Yes, actually we have mentioned this, um, uh, this story uh, in uh, uh, Saint Simon um, uh, or Deir Saman al in Muqattam. So uh, it, it's uh, actually uh, curved on uh, the walls of it. So it's so great place to be visited, but unfortunately we are not marketing for that. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, uh, we're trying to put facilities for uh, and uh, marketing as well for uh, such neglected uh, sites. We have so many great sites to be visited here in Egypt, even from Egyptians, uh, firstly. And then uh, we're trying to... And this is exactly what's, t what's taking place on the ground. We are moving forward mm -hmm. uh, in um, putting them on the right track and yes. to amend our tours map to enjoy all these uh, sites. Um, yes. But this means that we should have more hotels, more rooms, more even airports to uh, receive um, uh, guests or tours coming mm -hmm. from all over the world. More How easier roads to arrive more transportation to arrive for such uh, or to such sites. Mm -hmm. uh, so actually, Saman um, Kharraz uh, or Saint Simon, uh, it's curved on the uh, mountain. Mm -hmm. So uh, to, to excavate that, uh, uh, actually is, um, um, it's an illusion. Uh, so uh, it's so great a uh, site to be visited. And of course, it's a wonderful experience, mm -hmm. and yeah. all the visitors are it going is. to return back with unforgettable memories. Mm -hmm. um, 
also since you are mentioning these wonderful sites uh, of the most important things which took place uh, uh, recently in uh, the only in the past um, very few years that um, the uh, ministers of antiquities uh, invited uh, diplomats to mm -hmm. witness themselves the new discoveries and to be themselves our ambassadors in their countries how do you see the importance of that and how that was another turning point or another way to propagate for our new sites uh, to be honest with you it's a great step for that uh, from the minister and uh, uh, actually it's exchange of the culture as well experience and sharing experience for um, all workers and all participants uh, so uh, it will be a great step from uh, him and thank you uh, or thanks given to him and uh, uh, we're still working on that uh, delegates and uh, and also in uh, uh, in uh, faculties or in universities uh, we exchange as well uh, the students uh, um, uh, actually uh, I was one of the students um, I have a scholarship from Germany, so uh, it, this is an example. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I had uh, for about 11 or 12 um, uh, different uh, nationalities uh, from uh, all over the world, so it will be, um, uh, it's considered to be an exchange of cultures and experience, so it's a great step in uh, enlargement of the tourism mm -hmm. as a whole. Uh, well, uh, Dr. Amira, since you are that much interested in soft power and mm -hmm. the importance of soft yes. power and how we can propagate for our um, uh, tourism sites via cartoons and or via art in general, mm -hmm. yes. um, the uh, celebration, for example, of uh, the Mummies Convoy, it was such an event and the whole world was watching, billions of people were watching uh, what took place and inshallah we have other plans to have more of events like that for the Grand Egyptian Museum inauguration mm -hmm. for example. How do you see the importance of such events? Uh, actually so important, it's, um, it's a marketing and learning at the same time. Uh, we're, um, we're teaching something in uh, an entertaining way, even if it's um, a festival or a film or, um, or a movie or a series or whatever. It's actually uh, everyone is attending in this. Uh, um, it's just uh, for propaganda and the art as well. So um, for me, it's so interesting uh, and uh, we're working on that. Um, actually, my PhD is in this field, uh, by the way, um, reviving heritage through art, uh, not through a book or um, actually the book is so important for that, but I mean the visual art and um, the visual learning, as I mentioned before, uh, to attract uh, all uh, the audience, mm -hmm. all uh, ages, not just kids, but the kids uh, um, are in my target. Uh, so uh, it's so important for them how to learn and how to um, entertain the audience, mm -hmm. even if it's a kid or an adult. So uh, it's so important for According me. According to your study, mm -hmm. uh, which, uh, which uh, uh, genre or which type of art is, um, can be more attractive? I mean, is it to be a movie, a documentary, um, a song even? Cartoons and, uh, and songs. Mm -hmm. And uh, a whole uh, performance, uh, dancing or, uh, or uh, songs at the same time. Uh, like uh, Dunya Samir Ghanem, for example, uh, like the period, the performance of the period of uh, Kings and Queens, mm -hmm. which was held in 2021. Mm -hmm. It was a great uh, propaganda for our history. Actually, some um, where so many people uh, do not know anything about our history, our uh, kings and queens. So the period um, give them this uh, idea uh, through um, a celebration and um, or a song, uh, and this is just a performance. So it's so easy. Yeah, to, mm -hmm. and to uh, um, to host um, artistic festivals, yes. for example. I mean. When uh, we knew that uh, the drums festival in El Muazz Street, for mm -hmm. example, is attracting more participants from all over the world mm -hmm. uh, a day, uh, a year after the other, this is saying that we succeeded in attracting more 
tourists because everyone who is going to return back with, uh, about, um, to his country is going to speak about his experience in Egypt yes. or her experience, mm -hmm. of course, mm -hmm. and to be our ambassador in his, in his or her country. Yes. How do you see this as another source of attraction or another way to market um, our Egyptian sites? Uh, for me, it's the best way to attract or to um, deliver an information uh, you want to explain. Uh, so, uh, um, uh, if she or he um, uh, are dancing, dancing um, or um, celebrating in a festival of drums, um, for example, in the Citadel or Maza Street or, um, or um, El Kurba, uh, actually, um, uh, yes, uh, they'll be ambassadors uh, uh, for us uh, in their uh, countries and uh, it will be a marketing as well mm -hmm. so uh, for me this is the best way to um, deliver our uh, history or to explain our history uh, and our identity as well even if it's a festival or uh, like um, uh, the festival drums of, festival yes yeah. of drums um, or uh, it's um, our traditions as well uh, like Hanna uh, Subo or um, Bachelorette at Night, uh, this is the um, yeah. Was, uh, and and to add to this, because as, um, simply we do have a lot to speak about, yes. but let's go to sports tourism, for example, uh -huh. because this is another issue. Yes. To have uh, competitions, world competitions, uh -huh. being uh, hosted here particularly in the new stadiums we have because there is such the Olympic Village, for example, mm -hmm. in the new administrative capital, the new stadium. We do have other stadiums and other courts for shooting, for fencing, for squash, as we are on top of the squash, mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, whether in men or in women, by the way, let's oh, be that great. proud of that. <laughs> and to when, whenever we are ready to host all these sports e events, this is going to be another boost to sports tourism true of course in all fields not sports only not in tourism only um uh, this considered to be a touristic um a field uh and uh, exchange of experience and cultures as well so uh, it's considered to be a very important field to start to uh, uh, work on um like olympics as you mentioned and uh, like um uh, all types of um, of uh, sports like swimming. Actually, I'm a swimmer, by the way. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And because of I'm that, I think coach. you know yeah. more about that. Yeah. But for example, so. I'm going to end with this example because I was very proud uh -huh. uh, when we hosted this uh, friendly football mm -hmm. competition and we had uh, Croatia, Luka Modric and his and his teammates. They were taking photos. Um, just beside the pyramids mm -hmm. and they were fascinated by the pyramids. Yeah, Luka Modric, right. one of the most expensive and the best football players uh -huh. worldwide. This photo in itself can worth billions of dollars. Sure. Let's say millions of dollars, sure. enough. Um, and it's such a, a way uh, to say that Egypt is safe, I enjoyed my time, this site is very wonderful and uh, in an indirect way he is um, inviting all people from our, around the world to come and to have this experience. Mm -hmm. How do you see this? Uh, it's, um, it's a great role for that uh, and uh, they share their experience in Egypt so it's so great for, um, for us. Uh, we have to be grateful for having such uh, um, country and uh, such identity uh, in uh, Egypt is safe. Um, even uh, we're impacted or the tourism is impacted um, um, as for uh, the um, Israel-Hamas uh, uh, war, but uh, almost or all over, uh, or overall, uh, we are safe. Actually, Egypt is safe. Egypt is safe, and we yes. hope that all the region is going to be safe. And yes. let's cross our fingers that tomorrow yes. is going to be a better day, and we are going to enjoy a safe, secured, peaceful region. That's right. And that's the call from Egypt all over uh, to, to all people all over the world. And this was our call since last October, since the genocide war started in Gaza. Mm -hmm. Well, Dr. Amir, thank you very much for your input. Uh, mm -hmm. and. 
and inshallah we are going to review with a promise to see you in more episodes of our program thank you, thank so, you much. so much thank you so much i enjoyed uh, more than you can imagine uh, thank you dear you for the second time thank it's you. my honor to be with you for the second time I'm our honor honored. dear thank you well i'm going to leave you now where the, the uh, most important events which took place in the past seven days and particularly about tourism till we meet again same time on mal tv international many thanks for watching with all my love this was nirmin abdurrahman I'm very happy here in Egypt, so I really like Egyptian people. Um, I mean, Egyptian people are extremely friendly. They're extremely uh, kind of outgoing and easy to talk to and welcoming in the country. Uh, they're very funny. Um, I've had a, overall only good experiences with Egyptian people, besides a few exceptions, you know, like anywhere. Um, so you know, I'm very uh, happy here, actually, in Egypt. I have a lot of good friends here from Egypt and from elsewhere. So.